All right, guys, before we start the video, I just wanted to shout out that we are recruiting for our guild on the NA East servers for Throne and Liberty Global Release. If you guys are looking for a semi-hardcore to hardcore PvP experience, head over to my Discord, go to over to the important tab, TNL Guild Info, and you guys can see a form you guys can fill out. Hope to see you guys on the global release and enjoy the video. Hey, what's up, guys? A vulnerable here. So I'll be talking about my updated guide on Greatsword Dagger. So this build guide will go over tier one to tier two and all the way to the Talandre kind of phases of the game. This will also go over PvP, PvE, and AOE clearing for this build as well. I'm also going to have a bunch of quest log links in the description as I go throughout this video. I'll be referencing my quest log uh, build guides as you guys can click on it and see what gear I have, uh, what my skill builds are, and if I make any changes, etc. You guys will get updated on the website. So yeah, let's get into it. We're going to start off with the tier 1 builds. Alright guys, so we are on questlog.gg. Again, links in the description for all the builds. But as you can see here, we've got the tier 1 early game, late game, dungeon and AoE farming builds. Uh, in general, these builds are quite affordable for the average player. I didn't make anything too expensive when it comes to like really like high you know, expensive tier one builds. I perhaps might make one later. So you guys, if you guys want to like, for example, swipe on the game or you're in a top level guild and you can get some of these expensive items, like for example, an Adentus Greatsword. Uh, but in general, yeah, these are definitely more affordable builds. And also when it comes to dungeon and AOE farm, uh, the builds down here, the only difference with this is because I, in this game, you don't really change your gear set to from um, PvP to PvE, you kind of keep the same gear. You can later on down the tier 2 uh, kind of line and go for min-maxi stuff, but uh, in general, you most people run with the same kind of gear set. But yeah, so the attributes will change in the dungeon farm build with the AoE farming build, and the skills over here will change. So that's the only main things that will change when it comes to the builds. All right, let's go over the GS Dagger tier 1 PvP build over here. Uh, when it comes to your skills. So to begin with, we've got the block blade for your defensive. If you perfectly roll with the block blade, you will go invis, which is pretty important when it comes to survival. Learning how to become good with this is pretty key. Valiant Brawl, a spammable bit of damage, but also used in one of your main single target combos. Brutal Incision, it's not an insane amount of damage, but in general, you're going to use this as kind of a finisher of your combo or to, to kind of just execute someone that's quite low health. Stunning Blow, pretty bread and butter when it comes to your main single target combo, very important. Death Blow, this is used in your single target combo, once again, some big single target damage. The AT Blade, also very important when it comes to your uh, single target damage combo. This is probably the most damage in the build that you're going to kind of dish out. Ascending Slash, this is a combo extender, or if you want to knock a uh, kind of person that's blocking, or like an SNS player that's blocking, you can Ascending Slash their block, uh, just to kind of knock them prone. This has quite a lot of uses and is very strong. Camouflage Cloak, of course, this is very important. This is your main invis and how you're going to either disengage or engage. Uh, Will Breaker, this is going to be used in your main single target combo. With the specialization, you're going to be removing a bunch of evasion off a target that you hit. So especially early on when a lot of people are going to be running evasion, you're going to have this to just reduce a bunch of melee evasion. Devastating Smash, uh, used in kind of more, I guess like more larger scale situations, but in general, this is uh, pretty important for just CCing a bunch of people. You can also use this in a single target CC combo, you can do that. Shadow Strike, one of your main mobilities, of course, uh, which will silence and root the target. Precision Dash, another source of mobility over here. Uh, you can either use this to get out or get in. Or you can use this to fake. Also with the um, specializations, you're going to be rooting a target with this. So you can combo this into kind of, for example, a Ascending Slash. Uh, Phantom Smoke Screen, something uh, I would say more or so recently I picked up. Uh, it is extremely strong and it is one of the main ways you're going to be surviving. And when it comes to the tier one, all the way up to the Talandre phases of the game, this ability is insanely strong if you get good with it. You can also save teammates with this ability um, depending on the situation. So this is sick. For your passive skills, you've got Robust Conditioning. This gives you a bunch of HP, pretty no-brainer when it comes to Greatsword, because then you combo this with Vital Force. Uh, the more HP you have, the more uh, hits, uh, skill damage boost, and stun chance you get. This is pretty uh, important and one of the best passives when it comes to Greatsword. 
Cold Warrior, uh, this is just extra damage or like extra heavy attack and crits when you stun a target and you have access to two different stuns here. So this is pretty good. Pretty important for dealing a lot of damage in your single target combo. Barbarian Dash, this is going to be one of your ways to move around. You have uh, quite a few mobility skills, for example, Precision Dash and like Shadow Strike. So this will be very nice to get you around the battlefield or if you want to chase someone down or escape. Assassin Instinct for a more crit, just no brainer crit hit chance. Shadow Walker, this is pretty insane. This passive skill, I think it's one of the most broken skills in the game. Uh, you get a lot of magic and ranged evasion, so yeah. You're mainly going for the ranged evasion, and this is a melee and ranged evasion build, but uh, having that extra magic evasion can be pretty nice as well. Uh, Raising Frenzy for some more damage if you're fighting multiple people, especially if you're diving in with, for example, Devastating Smash. This is not always the case, but uh, th this can be an optional thing. You can remove this, for for example, you can run maybe Assassin Step if you want. If you're really not trying to take uh, like massive fights with f you know a few people. I wouldn't call it massive, but you know what I mean. Uh, Raffle Edge for crit damage. Pretty important, just 80% crit damage, pretty huge. And as you can see here, you got the skill priority. Uh, this probably doesn't matter too much, but you can take a look at it. Uh, for Greatsword Masteries, you're rocking this. And for a Dagger Masteries, you're rocking this. It's basically the same. All right, let's talk about your skill specs here. So first things first, you're running Cruel Smite on the Valiant Brawl as it just gives extra damage and a little bit of AoE damage. You're running this Stunning Blow. So uh, there's a few things that are pretty important. For example, your duration here by one second, that's pretty nice. A skill hit increased by 30%. I'm not honestly too sure if this is going towards resistance or evasion. I'm not 100% sure, but personally, I just want to hit my stun as much as possible. So I saw that and I'm like, yeah, 100% I have to get that. And when it comes to this over here, your next skill will do your 150% more damage. It's pretty important when it comes to understanding your combo, not wasting this, for example, on a Valiant Brawl. You want to be using this on, for example, you know, a Guilty Blade or a Death Blow. Uh, speaking of Death Blow, we're running the Charge Death Blow over here, and we're rocking the damage dealt to prone targets. So this is going to make, make sure you're basically using Death Blow when you use, for example, Ascending Slash that are on the ground. Uh, this will give it, you know, 30% extra damage. And of course, the Charge Death Blow gives it, Death Blow just in general, like, quite a bit of damage. A uh, Guillotine Blade, you're also rocking the Charge Guillotine Blade with the area damage. Uh, area damage optional. You can maybe swap this out for something else in here. Not too sure, but you can kind of figure it out in general. But uh, I personally uh, sometimes jump into clumps, so this area damage could be actually all right. You got Ascending Slash. Uh, what's really important is understanding this over here. Uh, so when you use it, a lot of all your skills for five seconds will be 250. You know, it's increased by 250 skill damage. That is pretty crazy. Uh, this is pretty important to understand as it is part of your, your main combo. You're going to be using this quite early on in the combo just to get this uh, damage boost over here. You got the skill uh, cooldown decrease over here because I think the skill in general is very strong. So I want it to be off cooldown as much as possible. And of course, your prone duration by one second, which is another no brainer. When it comes to camouflage cloak, uh, this one is optional, for example. Uh, but I kind of like the idea of this just to kind of keep me safe when I kind of either go in this so I don't get tornadoed from bow, for example, or there's a few different things that can be a problem uh, when I go in this. And this will increase your duration by two seconds. You do have the option of going for the decrease cooldown by 10% here, but uh, if you're trying to set up, for example, bombs for like your GVGs or whatever, this can be kind of nice to give you a bit of extra time to kind of maneuver and figure out a spot, you know, to use your, for example, Devastating Smash to initiate. Uh, will Breaker, so you're rocking this over here to basically reduce the evasion. This is the main reason you're running Will Breaker, because especially early on, a lot of people are going to be running evasion, so reducing their evasion is going to be good when you hit them. A Devastating Smash, increasing stun duration by 0.5 seconds, also optional, but I think, you know, Devastating Smash is pretty nice, so increasing the stun duration a little bit longer for your army or whatever is going to be pretty cool. Shadow Strike, I run the range, and apparently this is bugged or something, so you don't have to run it now, but it might be fixed before Global, for example. So, you know, hopefully they fix it soon, or if it hasn't been fixed already. Uh, Shadow Escape's also optional if you want to use it to get in and out, but I personally don't like it. It's up to kind of playstyle. Precision Dash, range is important, and the bind is super important. You can bind actually a lot of targets with this, but if you Precision Dash for a clump, for example, uh, and since you can dash twice, you can bind just so many targets or, in general, just binding a target you're chasing is very nice. 
All right, so for Phantom Smoke Screen, I have the duration increased by one second over here. Now, the reason I'm not running this, now it says melee projectiles. It's actually all melee abilities in general, not just projectiles. I don't know if it's a mistranslation or it's bugged. Either way, it's everything melee. The reason I'm not running this is because I run a heavy melee evasion build. So it's if you're having issues still getting hit by melee stuff in your smoke screen, you can rock this to be extra safe. But I just thought as you know, it's seven points. I feel wasted as you're running a full melee evasion build anyway. But I think definitely it's a decent option. Um, yeah. When it comes to your late game for tier one just dagger, there isn't really anything that's changing. The only thing that's mainly changing is your uh, gear. So I have all that, of course, in the description. I don't need to go through every PC as you guys can look at it right here. All right, we are back once again at the Castleton Dummies over here to show you guys how you're going to play this build and what's the kind of main damage rotation when it comes to this build and how you're going to initiate, for example. So, okay, the main thing to understand is there's a few ways to initiate with this build. Uh, you can either initiate from invis, depending if you're going into a high danger kind of area. You need to invis. It all depends on your experience understanding how to play the build. You've also got your precision dash uh, kind of entrance or your, you've got your shadow strike. So let's say we want to kind of start off with, without invis, let's say shadow strike. So we're going to shadow strike our opponent. He's going to get rooted and silenced. Then what we're going to do is we're going to uh, push him on the ground with ascending slash once he's on the ground you're then going to will break it to remove his evasion and then you're going to a death blow after this you're then going to stunning blow and you're going to guillotine blade and you should be able to finish him off with you know maybe a valiant brawl into a uh, brutal incision if you want to extend the combo off the bat and you want to use your AOE CC on, let's say, a single target, you can, after this, uh, use your Devastating Smash to extend the combo and fit in you know, another ability or so. If you want to do this in a more safe way, if you want to jump on a target or if you want to jump on a clump with Devastating Smash, make sure when you land on that target, you want to pop yourself your smoke screen. So this will help you with a lot of range situations. If you are running the melee... Uh, kind of specialization it'll also make it so nothing in general is going to really hit you besides kind of aoe stuff but of course with your precision dash you have the root specialization so you can root this target and then uh, ascending uh, slash him to knock him over as well and like i said of course you can perhaps go invis and go for an aoe devastating smash pop your smoke screen to make sure you're safe and just kind of continue on your combo Make sure to understand though, you want to be using your ascending slash to like right before your combo uh, as it will give you that 250 skill damage boost. And also understanding the uh, will breaker is going to be very nice for you. If you're 1v1 and they don't have evasion on their build, this will breaker might not be as important, but it's still pretty uh, good. And also one more thing to mention, uh, when you perfect roll, like I can show, for example, I can actually show one Gertrude over here. We're going to do it right here. So you can perfect roll like this. You go invis. So keep that in mind um, as it is quite important to get out of sticky situations. But yeah, that's just a general theory on how you're going to be playing the build. All right, guys, let's talk about the GS Dagger Dungeon Clearing uh, Skill Build Guide. As I said before, the gear is basically going to be the same as your PvP gear. So go check out the links in the description for all the gear and stuff. But again, relatively, it's going to be the same uh, that I use for PvP and PvE. For defensive skill, you're running a block of blade. This is mainly for the mana recovery. You're rocking Cleaving Moonlight. This is pretty good because you get the specialization to give you thunder stacks. This is a lightning dagger build, so it is quite important to have this. It's going to be your main spammable piece of damage. You got Brutal Incision, which converts to the Thunder Clouds bombing. Uh, at 20 stacks of lightning, uh, you're going to pop this just to do a bunch of uh, just damage in general. Valiant Brawl, just a spammable bit of damage. Gaia Crash, definitely an optional thing over here, but just more damage in general. But this definitely becomes, you know, more potent when you get, of course, your tier 2 grade sort eventually, but of course this is tier 1. Um, but in general, yeah, just a bit of extra damage. A Geety Blade, a big chunk of single target damage. Da Vinci's Courage, mainly for the attack speed for you and your allies. World Breaker, uh, just reduces the, you know, Targets defense by quite a bit, very good for bosses and just mobs in general. Ascending Slash using this mainly for the specialization, the 250 skill damage boost. That's what you're going to be using this as like a buffer. Stunning Blow, you're using this also as a buffer as you get extra damage from the specialization plus the Cold Warrior perk. 
Do you remember this? Just because you don't stun a target, you're going to shock them, as you can see, for 8.4 seconds. So you're going to increase your heavy attack with the Cold Warrior perk. So you, do, oh, you just do more damage. A Death Blow, single target, a uh, big chunk of damage. Precision Dash uses mobility, but also you get the heavy attack chance from it. And Inject Venom, which is going to be Lightning and Fusion, which is going to be pretty important when it comes to the Lightning kind of combo you have here. When it comes to passive skills, you're running a Vital Force for mainly the increased skill damage. Robust conditioning, a bit extra tankiness, and kind of combos a little bit with Vital Force, just mainly a bit of extra tankiness there. Uh, Cold Warrior is going to be pretty important for doing a lot more heavy attack on bosses or mobs, etc. As, uh, well, like I said before, when you're stunning blow, if, just because you can't stun a target, you're going to shock them basically, which is going to be like 8.4 seconds over here, as you can see. So quite a bit of damage. As that's an instinct for the crit hit. Destructive Fang for more crit hit. Raffle Edge for the 80% increased damage for uh, criticals. Raging Frenzy, this is not always active, but in general, you don't really have too many options. So this will do when you're pulling kind of ads throughout the dungeon. And Shadow Walker for some evasion. Again, once again, you don't really have too many options uh, when it comes to you know, stuff over here. So I uh, just run Shadow Walker for the extra bit of evasion, I guess. And of course, you've got your skill upgrade prior at the bottom over here. You guys can check it out. Once again, doesn't matter too much. When it comes to your masteries, you're using the same PvP masteries realistically. So yeah, you rock this for your greatsword and you rock this for your dagger. For your skill specs, cleaving moonlight, consecutive use over here, just a bit of extra damage. Also combos with the uh, thunderclouds uh, effect over here. So it's going to be your main way. You're going to stack a bunch of thunderclouds and then you're going to go over to your brutal incision next and you're going to have thunderclouds bombing where if you get the 20 stacks, it's going to do a lot more damage over here. So trying to get to 20 stacks, watch the buff bar of the boss or the enemies and pop your thunderclouds bombing off cooldown. You got a Valiant Brawl running Cruel Smite, a bit of AOE damage, extra damage to general. Now, guy crash uh, optional stuff over here. I just picked it up because also this was kind of connected to my my tier two build version of this. Uh, so I mean, this is an optional thing here. But uh, yeah, guy crash. I got these two over here for extra damage and attack speed. Guillotine blade. You've got the damage collection plus the skill cooldown decrease. Generally, you're going to pick up a lot of skill cooldown decrease just to kind of have more uptime on your damage on a boss, for example. Da Vinci's have got the increased duration as it will keep your uptime on you and your allies with the attack speed buff, which is pretty nice. It's the next slash. This is uh, pretty good for its 250 increased skill damage boost. As I said before, this is a, uh, a buffer effect more than anything. It's not used for its damage or its CC. Uh, it's just used for this right here. And you get the skill cooldown decrease as you will have a more buffer up, uh, buffer uptime here. Stunning blow, skill cooldown, decrease 15 seconds to have more buffer uptime. Uh, a damage boost increase. Make sure you're popping, for example, a big damage ability right after your stunning blow. For example, the you know, guillotine blade. And to increase the duration of the effect. I think this increases your shock duration as well. So just more uptime. Death blow running damage collection to charge death blow. And you're running skill cooldown decrease. And for Inject Venom, you're going to be switching it to the Lightning Infusion because it's a Lightning build, and you've got the cooldown decrease. All right, so you're wondering, invulnerable. How do I play this build? How do I do my main damage rotation on the bosses? So I'm going to show you guys real quick. All right, so what you're going to do is you're going to pre-pop with Lightning Infusion and Da Vinci's Courage over here. You're going to Precision Dash on the enemy to get the heavy attack. You're going to Will Breaker, Ascending Slash, and Stunning Blow. This is going to be how you're going to get a lot of your pre-buffs here. So then you're going to then pop your guillotine blade. You're going to a guy, a crash, death blow, charge up death blow. Uh, you're going to thunderclouds bombing over here. If you have 20 stacks, depending on, uh, you know, depending on if you got 20 stacks during this combo. Uh, if you didn't before that, you're going to pop a cleaving moonlight just to get your 20 stacks. Uh, and then you're going to pop, you know, lightning infusion again. You're going to valiant brawl over here and you just kind of keep repeating that basically. So once again, I'm going to show you guys how I do this in real time here. So we go, pop this, pop this, push a dash in, this, this, bang, boom. Might pop, I might pop up death blow before any of this. Gaia crash, thunderclouds bombing, valiant brawl, and yeah, this is kind of rotating for that main combo. The main thing to understand is the the pre buffs. So. Uh, when it comes to your Lightning Infusion, of course, that you diminish courage for attack speed, that's pretty important. Uh, your Will Breaker is pretty important to pop it now, 
because you're going to then follow it up with an ascending slash we get to increase your skill damage boost for all your next skills and then when you pop stunning blow on the target the next skill you use is increased by 150 percent so that's then that's when you uh kind of follow up with your guillotine blade to do the most as it is the most damage out of your whole kit and yeah that is your main combo all right, let's go over your AoE farming build for Jizz Dagger or kind of your uh, open world dungeon farming build. Uh, once again, gear will be the same as the PvP section of the uh, build guide. All right, so first things first, you're going to go for Block Blade. This is going to be pretty important to get your mana back as this build in general is very mana hungry. So keeping in mind to using your Block Blade to you know get as much mana back when you're getting you know, fury attacks from certain mobs. As the Lightning Dagger build, you're running a Cleaving Moonlight with, of course, the um, the specialization to give lightning to your Cleaving Moonlight. You got Brutal Incision, which will be Thunderclouds bombing. Just, just a bit of single target damage occasionally when you want to single target a mob down. Valiant Brawl with the Cruel Smite for AoE damage here. Just a rat, kind of a spammable, uh, not your main damage when it comes to uh, PvE clearing. Gaia Crash, you're converting this to the Ice Gaia Crash. This is pretty important with the Ice Devastating Tornado and the Da Vinci's Courage Ice. But yeah, uh, so you're running a Guillotine Blade. You're running this with the Area Damage plus the Charge Up Guillotine Blade. Of course, the Devastating Tornado over here with the Ice Package. Running Umbral Spritz to combo with the Lightning Package. Just some extra um, AoE damage here. Ascending Slash, you're only using this for the 250 skill damage pre-buff. So it's basically a pre-buff. Will Breaker, uh, another kind of pre-buff to, you know, weaken all your enemies around you. You know, do more damage. Da Vinci's Courage for you and your party for the attack speed. Precision Dash, I guess, kind of optional, but mobility gives you a bit of heavy attack chance. And Inject Venom, which is going to be turned into the Lightning Infusion for the Lightning Package. For Passage, you're running Robust Conditioning, more tankiness, uh, helps Vital Force, I guess. Mainly for actually tanking this because open world farming uh, mobs can actually do a lot of damage. So, uh, Vital Force mainly for the skill damage boost. Victor's Morale to help you with mana sustain. Raging Frenzy, no brainer, extra skill damage boost because you're going to be killing more than one mob around you usually. Assassin Instinct for the extra crit hit. Destructive Fang for the same thing, extra crit hit. Raffle Edge for the extra crit damage. And I rock a double armor. So, if I'm getting attacked by a lot of mobs, it just increases my defense overall. So, it's kind of all right. Uh, for your masteries, you're basically rocking the same as, you know, usual as your PvP builds. Uh, max out your bottom tree and go over here for your middle tree. And same thing for the greatsword and the dagger, it's the same shit. And skill upgrade prior if you guys really need to worry about this. They don't need to worry about this too much. Alright, for specializations, you're rocking the cleaving moonlight with the consecutive use and the thunder clouds um, effect with the lightning dagger. If you want to do extra single target damage, of course, you could pop your Thunderclouds bombing when a mob has reached 20 stacks. Uh, it's not your main damage, of course, when AoE clearing, but it's just there for single target. Valiant Brawl into Cruel Smite for the AoE damage. Gaia Crash using Frost Cleaving, very important for the Ice Package. Guillotine Blade with the damage collection plus area damage. Guillotine Blade does quite a lot of damage and, you know, giving you the area damage, which is pretty sick. Devastating Tornado, the only one that is optional here is the resistance to CC, but so if you're like in a place that doesn't CC you much, then you can remove this perhaps, but if you're in a place where a lot of mobs will CC you, this is very important as you don't want to be knocked out of your spin. But Ice Tornado, very important. Without this, this ability is worthless. And the bonus damage over here, this is when you bound targets, which is uh, kind of an achievable thing through the Ice Combo or the Ice Package. Umbral Spirits, you're running Thunder Spirits. This is kind of a pre-buffer, which will help you do quite a bit of damage here in an AoE. Uh, Sending Slash, you're using this for the additional uh, skill damage boost over here, 250. That's kind of a pre-buff. Will Breaker, you're using damage area change because it just makes it way more convenient to hit all your mobs. Usually you're kind of in between mobs when it comes to big pools. So it just makes it more convenient to hit all the mobs around you. Da Vinci's Courage, uh, pretty important. Da Vinci's Chill, this is for your Ice Package. And inject venom, lightning infusion for the thunder clouds package. All right, back to the dummies. All right, invulnerable. How do I play this build? I'm confused. What's happening here? So yeah, this build in general is a little bit intricate. It's got a lot of different combos you can do and intertwine certain abilities. Uh, but there's a few packages, which is like the ice package and the lightning package that I kind of want to teach you guys what's up when it comes to comboing mobs. 
All right, so let's say we're gathering a bunch of mobs over here. We're going to pop, for example, the Da Vinci's Courage over here, which is going to start putting ice stacks. So you can see these ice stacks over here. Once we reach 10 stacks, they're going to be bound. Now, this is pretty important to understand because with um, Frost Cleaving, you're going to do extra damage to bound targets. Also, you do extra damage with Ice Tornado to bound targets. So your main thing is going to be your Da Vinci's Courage while gathering mobs. You're going to bind, bound the targets. Before you do your combo, you're going to pop a Lightning Infusion. You're going to pop a Lightning uh, or uh, your Thunder Spirits over here. Then you're going to Will Breaker to reduce all of the... Um, you know, the target's defensives here. You're also going to put lightning stacks on. Now, this is pretty important for your Thunderclouds, um, what do you call it, the, uh, the, the spirits over here to kind of proc a lot of AoE. So I'm going to show you guys what we're doing here. I know it's a lot of, it's a mouthful, but I'm going to show you guys what's happening. So we're going to go in, we're Vinching, we're popping lightning, we're doing Will Breaker. We're also pre-buffing with, um, with your Ascending Slash. For the 250 damage boost, you're going to cross cleave all the all the targets here, and then you're going to spin. Now, of course, I can't show you guys here 100% because these mobs don't come to me. But once all these mobs are together, you're going to spin on them. And uh, yeah, it's going to do a massive amount of damage with comboing uh, all the ice abilities, plus your a uh, thunder spirits over here. And once you're out of this combo, you can then do Gaiety Blade to do the area damage. As you can see, I did crit. Unlucky, but uh, if you crit, you get the area damage, which is pretty sick. Uh, of course, you got Cruel Smite for a bit of extra area damage over here. Uh, if you want to do a bit of single target damage, if a mob has 20 stacks, you can then pop it with your Thunder Clouds bombing over here. Uh, and in general, you can use your um, Cleaving Moonlight for you know small stacks or just doing a bit of extra AoE damage. Uh, one thing I didn't mention in the combo, understanding that also Precision Dash gives you uh, heavy attacks, so just extra damage. But yeah, personally, I think the ice combo works super well with your Thunder Spirits as it does uh, every time you, you crit a target, it procs a bit of AoE from your Thunder Spirits. And with the amount of attacks you are doing with, you know, your Frost Cleaving plus your, uh, your Spin or your Tornado, it's actually pretty insane. And of course, this is extremely mana heavy, this combo, especially with your Spin. You're going to be eating for a lot of mana, so keep that in mind. And just keep watch of your mana bar. Uh, keep watch of your mana bar. And guys, that is all your tier one builds. We are now going to start moving into the tier two to tier two to laundry section of the video here. I'm going to go over the builds once again here. So let's get it. All right, guys. So when it comes to your tier two phase of Throne and Liberty, this is when builds kind of open up and you get yourself a lot of options when it comes to build directions. Um, I don't think one single build is always the best in certain situations. Sometimes you might want to go ranged or magic evasion. Sometimes you want the melee evasion, go a bit more tanky with the four piece wraith. Um, sometimes you're going to go glass cannon. I don't, there's, there's so many different ways you can kind of build uh, not just this like GS dagger, but in general, a lot of builds um, in Throne and Liberty. But I'm going to show you guys over here what my main, if I were to play GS Dagger on global, what am I aiming towards as my kind of dream build? Now, this build doesn't include, of course, your Archboss weapons. Like, things change with Archboss weapons. Um, Archboss weapons can be quite unrealistic for most players. Uh, but in general, uh, I personally think Four Piece Wraith is the way. Now, the reason Four Piece Wraith is the way is because when it comes to building melee evasion in this game, which this build is very good at, um, in general, melee evasion is just broken. When it comes to Tier 2 Talandre, they introduced a lot of accessories that increase your kind of evasion in general and with this build i've built up to 2.5k melee evasion now that is an insane amount of melee evasion it is very hard to counter that with a uh, hit in this game because it's a whole different topic but in general the reason why i've gone melee evasion is it's very hard to counter this of course in general i'm weak to kind of magic in this game it is what it is in this game you can't be powerful uh to basically everything you have to build uh kind of specifically you know if you want to be powerful against melee and range cool if you want to be powerful against range and magic cool so with this build, I personally opted into the melee evasion. Also, when you go down this route, you get a lot more access to hit as well. So for example, with this build, I have 1.8k hit. The possibility by changing some of the runes around and stuff, I can get even more hit. But if we look at, for example, my other kind of fury crafted build, this is extremely expensive, by the way. Uh, it's got multiple Archboss pieces of equipment. But in general, uh, this build, the problem with, for example, a range of magic evasion build is you get into the problem where hit 
becomes a bit of a problem. So if, you, if you're versing uh, people with a lot of melee evasion, you're not going to be able to hit them. But this build is also kind of headed towards uh, going for the people that don't build melee evasion and going for that backline. And it's more of like a glass cannon build. But yeah, the main build I want to you know, focus on is going to be, of course, this one over here. And uh, let's get into it. Let's get into the skills. All right, so when it comes to abilities, I'm going to quickly skim over this stuff as I've explained it all kind of in the tier one section in detail. But in general, when it comes to defensive skill, you've got two options here. You've got a block blade or iron point parry. Um, if you have a defense dagger, you could probably run iron point parry. Uh, and if you don't, you probably run a block blade. But I think either way, uh, even if you have the weapon or not, you can run either. I think both are viable. I think I would say iron point parry is more of like a kind of uh, small scale uh, defensive ability. Valiant Brawl for single target damage, uh, part of my combo. Brutal Incision to finish off my combo, but a single target damage. Stunning Blow, of course, to that's uh, the bread and butter for your combo in general when, with this build. Gaia Crash over here, you can either use Ice Gaia Crash or the normal Gaia Crash with the Tier 2 Greatsword. I'll explain more about that. Uh, in the specializations of why you would use either one. Guillotine Blade, uh, probably the highest single target damage, using Charge Guillotine Blade, pretty important. Ascending Slash, Combo Extender, uh, increase my damage in general of my skills. Camouflage Cloak, uh, just your invis if you want to initiate or escape. Uh, Will Breaker, so you're using this for the specialization to remove the evasion off a target. This is definitely an optional thing, but uh, yeah, a lot of people are going to be running a lot of melee evasion probably in the end game, so this is pretty good when you hit the target with it. Devastating Smash, pretty important for larger scale fights. The only reason this build is even viable in larger scale is Devastating Smash, and if you have to defend Greatsword, this is pretty insane. Shadow Strike, Mobility, Initiation. Precision dash, escape, mobility, just initiation in general. Also with the specialization that you pick up at this point, which will remo remove the uh, the kind of shield block off the tanks. And phantom smoke screen, because this ability is actually insane for uh, survivability. Passive skills, you're running robust conditioning uh, for the HP. That works with a vital force, which will increase your, you know, your melee hit HP and stun chance. I mean, nearly hit uh, skill damage, boost stun chance. Cold Warrior for when targets are stunned. I mean, just increases your heavy attack. More damage. Raging Frenzy for when you're jumping into a more of a, a heavy clump. Uh, this will increase your damage in general. Definitely optional if you want to go for the Assassin playstyle. You could probably rock, for example, um, Assassin Step. Shadow Walker, mainly using it for the ranged evasion, but a little bit of magic evasion, I guess. Assassin Instinct, using it for the crit hit. Barrier Dash, mobility with a lot of your mobility skills and Raffle Edge for more damage. And the same like your, all your other builds, you're rocking the same skill masteries over here with uh, max up bottom and halfway through the middle. And the same thing for both builds, basically. All right, time for skill specializations for the build. I'm gonna quickly just skim over stuff as uh, I've explained a lot of this stuff in the T1 version of the build. But you've got your Cruel Smite over here on Valiant Brawl, Stunning Blow, uh, these three over here. Uh, now, Gaia Crest, one thing I will explain, you do have an option here. You can remove this or you can use it. Now, this in general is better if you're fighting a lot more people. And if you want a faster Gaia Crash, the actual animation speed for this is a lot more faster, which means you could use other abilities in your combo faster. But this is mainly like if you're fighting more people, as it also increases the radius of your Gaia Crash. So this is definitely either you take it or you don't. Ability Blade for the area damage and the charge attack. You don't have to run the area damage. Again, it depends if you want to run more like an assassin style of this build. But again, I do jump into clumps a decent bit, so yeah. Setting Slash for the prone duration and the 250 damage boost. Camouflage Cloak, you're running the decreased cooldown by 10%. Uh, you can also run the duration here instead, and you can run the immune to CC. Uh, there's a few different you know, things in this build that's preference. Will Breaker rocking the minus evasion 300. Back for the range, apparently it's bugged, so hopefully it gets fixed soon. Precision Dash, the one main change you're making here is grabbing shield block chance minus, because at this point of the game, there's gonna be a lot more tanks, at least if the meta stays the way it is, um, and dealing with tanks is gonna be quite nice. And for of Smoke Screen, you're running the always evading melee projectiles, even with a melee evasion build, if people have enough hit, um, this is going to be really nice. You just, when you're at a Phantom Smoke Screen, a lot of time, you're just not going to die. 
you're going to see massive amount of <laughs> hits on top of your head. So I, I love Phantom Smoke Screen. Very, very good. Um, to quickly just go over how to play this build in general, uh, the only thing you're changing when it comes to the tier 1 version compared to the tier 2 version is you're replacing a death blow with Gaia Crash. Now I've got the normal Gaia Crash on, of course this is kind of, you can switch between the ice, Gaia Crash, depending on what content you're doing. Uh, but in general, you're doing the same stuff, so if you want to understand how to play the build, uh, go check the tier 1 section of the video. And when it comes to the PvE uh, tier 2 versions of the build, they're basically the same as the tier 1 version. So if you want to see how to play the tier 2 kind of version of the build, go check out that section of the video um, as there's nothing that really changes. All right, guys, hope this helps y'all out when it comes to DS Dagger tier 1 all the way to Talandre. Uh, once again, as I've mentioned before, quest log links in the description below if you guys want to see my builds as I might make changes here and there occasionally and I'll update on my quest log links. Don't forget to check out the stream, guys, as I stream basically every day. Check out the Discord as we are also recruiting for um, my new guild. That's going to be on NA East, which is a PvP guild. Like, sub, guys. You know all that good stuff. Thank you guys for watching, and peace out.